And we have uh, WG and Sabina Foyser uh, join us today. And today our topic is is particular focus on chess learning tips. And and she will introduce more learning uh, experience, learning advice, and also break down into different rating levels. And we will take about half of the section, about 30 minutes to uh, present the uh, conversations that we prepared. And then we'll leave another half of the, uh, another 30 minutes for people to ask questions and we give answers. So um, first I want to welcome Sabina and Sabina, you want to say hi to everyone? Hi everyone, hi, great to be here. Yeah, so for, uh, in case someone don't know who Sabina is, I mean, she's one of the top chess players and you probably, if you follow chess enough in the last few years, you probably see her a lot on the news. And then you also see her play in the top chess level. And she has been a national woman champion before. And she played for the US national team for many years. And she also coaching the national junior team before. So she is a, a very nice, cute coach in our uh, coaching teams. And so, uh, and thanks again to Sabina to talk to the taking time to talk to people. And maybe first, uh, uh, I want to just like uh, uh, give Sabina a general question uh, about your general feelings about chess learning resources for people. Because in last previous sessions, we see a lot of people asking learning tips and asking where to find resources. And maybe that's where we want to start a conversation. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Yeah. So um, I've, I've... I've started learning, you know, for those who have joined us before, I just wanted to say thanks for being here and the new people, you know, welcome. We we started this uh, online academy Chess Evolve because we wanted to, to try to be able to reach more people. And in the same time, we thought it would be nice to kind of give some tips, even if you cannot join the academy, maybe not right now, maybe at some point in time, but we wanted to give a few uh, tips to, to be able to help everyone. So. I saved already on my computer. I've, I've opened a few resources. So I'm going to share the screen. And um, okay, I need the right one, yeah. Uh, I'm going to share the screen with a few resources that I think are very helpful at all the levels for everyone to know. If you don't know about these, you definitely want to, to learn. So the easiest one and my favorite of all is Lee Chess. Uh, I can also share, we can share the links later with everyone in case you don't know something that I've put here um, that, that could help. So Leeches is, is totally free and it's a website where you can have your kids uh, play, but they also have resources for learning and doing puzzles. So um, this is one of the things that we'll start using actually for the Academy too on the website. Um, if you are going to be trying to improve yourself and you want to save your games, for example, what you would do is you would go here to learn. No, sorry. Uh, just learn and then click study. And then you're going to click this plus sign over here and you're going to create a study for yourself. So let's just name this. And you, you want to make sure you make it invite only so that you are the only one that has access to it. And the reason this is really good, because at the beginning, as you're getting started, is a great place to save all of your games and look them up. Because I have this thing here. One second. Uh, sorry, it got stuck. All right, I can't. How do I move the bar? I moved it. You click start. And um, this is going to be your study where you're going to go here to private studies and Sabina Exa, right? This is the one that I've created. Why is this so good? Well, you can copy here a bunch of games or you can just input stuff that you want to memorize. This is a great place. To, to save your games. And let's just say, for example, I open another one. Mm 
Well, I go to my profile. I go to my latest game. And I just had this game. I won nicely. Okay, good. So I want to look at this game and see how I did. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click analysis board. And you see down here where it says, uh, you just get the PGN of the game. You copy that, you go back to your study and you're adding it. And now what I'm going to be able to do is just have my games signed here. I can add a bunch of games that I want, have my games over here and start playing through them and try to, to look where I went wrong. This is a great place that you can do that. Now, depending on the level of the person, that's, that's something you want to do. Leeches also provides a lot of puzzles that uh, your kids are going to be able to, to solve. And, um, and okay, I have, I have the higher rating, but it starts from the, you can select over here on the left side, as you can see, easiest one. And uh, you can just, just start solving the positions. It tells you whose turn it is and, and you get to solve the position. Now, if after your kid has done a bunch of them, what I like about Lee Chess is that you can go here to puzzle dashboard and kind of see how they are doing. Where do they have the most issues? Uh, Lee Chess kind of provides this thing and it kind of gives you a various themes where your kid has more issues. So for example, for me, it looks like I'm not doing so great with this. Okay, my rating is pretty high, but you would, you would have a theme where, where you realize you're not doing so great so you can focus on actually uh, solving those positions. And if you messed up a lot, then you can replay those positions that you messed up and, and try to improve upon it. So this is something that I like about, about Lee Chess. If you're super early at the beginning, they also have chess basics. And these, the reason I like these, okay, it has music too, <laughs> it's fine. The reason I like these is because for starters, some are super much at the start. It teaches you how the pieces move and it helps you visualizing and it gets to be stronger and stronger. It's 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 um it's a free place to 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 learn to improve. Now, if your kid is struggling with notation, and this is a lot of parents from from my students that are telling me that their kid messed up and at some point they don't. They don't know what they wrote there. They skipped a move or something like that. It is very important to have your kids practice coordinates. And Leeches also has this place where you can set, you can set various time. You can set so that they only do it with the black pieces. You notice there's no notation over here. So once you start the training, it it tells you the square, right? So you have to start clicking on the square that's given you here. And you are having them kind of start visualizing the board and, and um, pay attention to how, how things work. So I think this is, this is another great tool. Okay, I'm not gonna do all of it, but you guys get the idea. Um, and you can select it just to do with white pieces and then switch so that they start really, really fast, getting a high score on uh, this. It's gonna help them visualize the board. There's, these are the main things that I like about Leeches. There's, of course, more, but this, this is one, one uh, website. Going on to the other one that everyone probably has is chess.com. Now, chess.com, uh, there's also Chess Kids, which I forgot to add. Uh, chess Kids is a good tool to, um, to do various things. There's a membership that you have to pay for this one. Uh, I, I don't have I don't have it myself, um, but a lot of my students have this website too, and it brings additional learning uh, tools. They have articles that the, the kids can read, and they have ways to play just against other kids. I know there's a big concern when you're an adult uh, parent that like you're worried about your kid when they play on a bigger website like LeeChess or Chess.com. Are people going to write in the chat stuff and, you know, your kids, you don't want them to have it. So you have the ability to have them sign up for Chess Kid and you should not deal with those issues. All right, Chess.com actually provides similar, similar puzzles. 
uh, similar uh, things to leeches. It has a few more videos though, and you can watch various streams as well over here. Um, if you want to learn more about chess.com, we can we can talk about that too. A great tool recently that I like very much is Chessable. For Chessable, it's a website where uh, you can buy books that are also made in video format. So what do I mean by that? Let's just say your kid is not doing so great studying just one book. You can't have them sit down at the board with a chess board playing certain things. You want to have them um, really be eager to learn. And I've noticed a lot of my students love watching videos. If you tell them, get this book, do this stuff, they're like, oh, I'm, not, I'm not really willing to do that as much. But if you tell them, how about you get tests, you get to do tests, you know, online and you get to watch a video too, they might be more, more willing to do it. So for example, let's just select one of the books that I have that has a video as well. For example, um, I, I want to choose this one, 100 End Games You Must Know. This is a great book also, by the way, for people who uh, are already, let's just say level wise, maybe like over 1400. This is a cool book that, that they can have. So what does what does this have? Well, you would technically get it when you go to courses here, uh, you would go to purchase it and then you would have the option to buy it just the book or purchase it with the video. So what it means is that one a person, and it's usually written over here who the author is, has recorded the video for the course. So you're getting the book read to you in a way. Uh, but in the same time, you have the ability to actually play through the moves after you have watched the video. So let's go through it. You're getting the book read to you in a way. Uh, but in the same time, you have the ability to actually. All right. So. One second. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> I went to it and then it disappeared. That is not good. Oopsie. All right. So you want to click on the book, you're opening it up, and then you want to watch the introduction. So this is what I tell my students. Watch, watch the video. Now, I'm not going to play through the whole thing, but basically, they're going to play through the explanations, see what they explain, what the author explains, and then they get to click here. Like, normally it's learn, but I've already done this book, so it shows me review. So you click on it, and then you're being given the position and the kid, after they have learned, they watch that whole video, they get tested on those exact positions, see how much they remember. So it's a great tool to watch something, uh, pay as much attention as possible, and then they get also points for good moves. So for example, here we go over here, and I don't know if you noticed that it actually gives me, uh, it gives me points over here, on how well I do it. If I play a move, for example, that's wrong um, or alternate, it tells me alternate, I need to find another move. So I love this feature because you just basically get the chance to, well, your kids, but or if you're a kid who's watching this, you get the chance to practice end games and practice what you have just learned. So this is another tool that I like. They have various books. Uh, a small hint, if you're considering to get this, ask your, if you have a coach, ask the coach what books they think are good um, for the level of your kid. If you don't feel like, if you don't have a coach, you don't know whom to ask, what I recommend to do is when you're clicking on a course on Chessable and you want to purchase one, like let's just say, I want my kid to start the Sicilian. Let's see what's in there about it. So we get this book and I would recommend looking over here for the recommended four. And it gives you a small hint as to for whom that course is, is being targeted, for what level. And if you feel that, you know, that is you, you can watch it. They also sometimes give you free preview. 
So you can watch the preview. And if you don't like this, you get 30, uh, you have 30 days to just tell them, I don't like your book. I want my money back. They will give you the money back within 30 days. Moving on to another, oh, this is our website. <laughs> uh, this is our website. So hopefully you came here through the website or through Facebook. If you want to learn more about the stuff that we do with Chess, with uh, Chess Evolve, you can go on our website. And then uh, last time I didn't talk about our website and Riju was not happy. So that's why I'm sharing it again. You guys can check out the tournaments that we organize. We also uh, will organize camps and we'll also organize in-person tournaments. So stay stay tuned on our on our website as well as we have an Instagram and Facebook page. I'm going to work on a TikTok to add two. And every single day we add the position. Um, and um, it's, it's some of them are pretty easy. Others are a bit harder. So it would be nice to, to have some interaction if you want to, you know, hear something from, from a strong player. Like it's usually me and Elshan who answer those posts. Feel free to check out what we're doing. Uh, all right, a book that I owned as a kid, and I solved it twice actually, was this this book, Chess 5334 Problems, Combinations, and Gates. This book was written by the dad of three famous sisters, the Judith Polgar, sorry, the, the Polgar sisters, Judith Polgar, Susan Polgar and uh, Sophia Polgar, they were from Hungary and their dad has trained them to become super strong players. Mm -hmm. Judith Polgar has become the strongest female chess player of all time. She got in top 10 in the world. Um, and um, and so learning from, from, you know, someone who has improved, who has helped these girls improve, I think it is great. He has like three different books that he has written. This one has all mates. For someone who's starting out and wants to learn to visualize the board and learn to do tactics, this is a great book that I recommend for you to get. Moving on. Uh, a great resource for, for people who are at the beginning and they want more training material besides the ones that they do if you're joining um, online classes is um, the steps books. And uh, you can read quite a bit about them on this website. And the first few are pretty good for, for beginner. And what I like about these books is that you actually get like various workbooks with, with positions. And then you also, as a parent, you can also buy the solutions. So the books, when you get them, they don't actually include the solutions. Solutions is another book or it's a downloadable version. So you can actually help check the, the in case you feel that your kid might check the solution or something like that, you can keep them separately. And, um, and these are some great books that, that you can use for additional material besides whatever your coaches are giving you. There's another website. I actually haven't used it for a really long time myself, but uh, I know it is really good and you can actually solve not just tactics, but also end games, quite a lot of end games, uh, which is Chess Temple. This is a pretty cool website as well. Also, you can create your account for free and um, and start solving. And I think it also shows you, I forgot how it was since I haven't used it for a while, but um, it also shows where you make most mistakes. So based on that, you can you can uh, figure it out. My favorite website that's totally free for end games. Um, depending on the level, a lot of the kids are struggling with checkmating, and you cannot keep, like if you don't have a coach close to where you live or you know, you don't have access to a coach online, you might not know how to help your kid learn how to checkmate with a queen, with a rook, or, or sim a simple basic in a pawn and games. Or you want to have additional material that, you know, your coach cannot give you 10,000 things in one hour class. So if you go on this website, it's pretty cool because it plays the, it plays the answer for you. 
So you don't need to worry about what am I gonna do? How am I gonna learn to trick me? They place the answer for you and they place the best answer. So let's just say you want to learn how to checkmate with the queen. So you're going on basic and you're clicking on this and you get a position. And the purpose of this is to try to checkmate as fast as possible, right? So you're going to make the move, as you can see, and, and it plays the response for you. So that way you can basically practice. And at the end, it's going to tell you in how many in how many moves you have, let's see, just to kind of show you really fast. Come on. I'm just gonna show you here. All right, so it tells you that you checkmated 40 moves, new record, very good. If you didn't know this, maybe you would have 20 moves or maybe you can do it faster than I did it right now. So you want, you, you get to have just, complete random positions, as you can see, with the pieces placed differently, and you're trying to checkmate as fast as possible. That was a basic uh, with the queen. You can also click on rook, and you get the exact same thing, a bunch of positions, and have your kids solve all of these at the stage that the coach is teaching those particular things. So they can get additional material, and it's automatic, simple, free, no questions asked. And uh, yeah, so these are kind of the websites. And uh, I'm going to make sure that I put them in the chat as well. So you guys can, uh, uh, you know, take a look at, take a look at all of them. And I'm going to put them right now. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much. Sabine. Yeah, hopefully I didn't go too much. I just kind of wanted to give some of the ones that are, of course, uh, very important for everyone to to know. I don't know if I missed something. Maybe there are some others. This is definitely a great one for endgames and chesskid.com. Um, this is the book that's the biggest book that I highly recommend for people to do. And yeah. Um, what else can I? What else can I say, Regine? Maybe, maybe there's something oh, I missed. From that's really good. I mean, thanks so much about the the learning tips about the learning resources. So I may want to, well, while you're doing this, I, I may want to move forward with the topic. Yes. And so the next uh, topic, I may just a pretty common question from my parents. I mean, where are the major uh, rating milestones? in the learning journey. I mean, I, I assume that some milestone is more important. I mean, if the kids pass that and stay stable, that means the knowledge already way different from what it before. So where are some major like milestones? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that uh, everyone is different. Everyone has a different uh, mm -hmm. learning curve. Mm -hmm. So depending on how uh, much time they're putting into chess mm -hmm. um, is going to to be changed for for different persons. So uh, I think everyone has. Um, maybe I should have kept this uh, the screen shared. Um, everyone has a various graph. Like if you look, for example, on U.S. Chess on ratings. Mm -hmm. Let's go to it. Um, and I think that it is very important to, not everyone agrees with this, but I personally think goals are a big thing to set. Kids love rewards a lot of the times. So if you try to set them goals for specific periods of time and tell them, okay, now, you know, if you get this, you're going to get rewarded. You have to see what they like. Some kids, they just want reinforcements like chocolates or something. Others want you know, to go to a tournament or maybe to go to Disneyland. I don't know. Um, so I think when you're doing stuff like that, you can certainly uh, help motivate them to want to do more. And when I, when I see kids spending more than just that one hour that I personally, you know, oftentimes I teach one to two, sometimes occasionally three, four hours per, per student per week. 
and on top of that, you know, my students, I tell them to work uh, certain periods of time too. So I think if you have more work, but you're listening to what your coach is telling you, the the curve is gonna be a bit better than if you just do one hour a week and that's all you're doing for chess. Mm. I have noticed from my students that I, so I've been teaching for maybe mm, at least 15 years. Well, yeah, like maybe 15 years, maybe 15, 14, 15 years now. And I've noticed that um, oftentimes um, the, the path is up usually. And then at some point there's going to be tournaments where they just, it's just bad um, out of nowhere. And if, uh, if the kids hits a couple of bad tournaments, parents have the tendency to think that uh, it's the coach's fault. We need to change the coach. We need to get a new coach. Um, you know, you're just not learning with you anymore. And I think that's not okay to do that because um, there are periods of accumulation and for everyone is gonna be different. There are periods where, where a kid will accumulate and then will have like a big jump um, or is, is going to stay at the rate. So when you start seeing that for like three, four months, nothing is going up anymore, it's probably a period of accumulation. I cannot say that everyone stagnates at 500 rating or 1,000 or 1,200. I, I think everyone is different. So I, I can't really say that there is just that one point okay. where they're they're stuck I've, I've had really different i've had kids who, who went to 1400 and then got stuck there for a few years actually yep. um you know it, it's just a bit it's a bit hard to say exactly that it's happening to every single one i don't know okay thank you and well i'm asking this what uh, the next question i mean other people if you have any questions you can type in the chat and um, maybe five, 10 minutes later, we will start to pick up questions from. And so my ne next question is about the parenting role uh, in the chess learnings. So, I mean, some parents, they assume themselves have some good knowledge, but uh, from the professional perspective, I assume that most of the parents, not a professional player, and they just like a, maybe 1500 rating level knowledge. And so do you feel like the parents how should be a healthy involvement with the kids learning? Should the parents be shut the mouth more quiet or the parents, I mean, some parents trying to be more hands-on and give you more guidance of learnings, which those knowledge may be false. So what do you think about that, the parenting role? Uh, so that is, is going to be a tricky, a tricky question to answer that one with so many parents here. I don't want to be like to, to push no, anyone it's away. It's okay. Whatever you think, uh, you, you don't have to course. be, uh, uh, purposely nice to any parents. So no, no, no. For so for real. I've had to deal with in, in my personal experience, you know, I, a lot of my students are kids. I teach adults too, but a lot of my students are kids and I've had parents who are very nice and understanding and, and supportive of the process. And I had some parents who are overly um, messaging me all the time, asking me what to do. And, and I, I, I tend to be the kind of person that will spend the time and 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 um, tell what to do, but then I would notice that they never did what I told them to do. So they would ask me, and oftentimes we would spend a lot of time going through what needs to be done, you know, because I cannot give, you know, one hour a class, for example, I cannot give 10,000 uh, hours of, of material, it's just, it's just impossible. So we, there are various steps, and, um, and then they, <laughs> they wouldn't do it. I think as a parent, it is very important to be supportive for for your kids and um, just um, find a coach that is um, kind of matches with your with your kids. Like if you see that there is some kind of connection, they like they say, "Oh, I'm looking forward to having class with Coach Sabina or you know whatever the coach name is. I'm very excited. Let's do it." When you when you see something like that, the connection that's number one thing that you have to 
to focus on. Uh, and then you kind of have to trust the coach, I think. Um, I rarely have met coaches that just, you know, do coaching for the money or something. It's just, I think usually um, most coach, coaches are passionate about helping that kid uh, grow and improve because, you know, you're basically a teacher and, and the role of a teacher should be to, to kind of see your, your pupil just outgrow you and get to be better than you are. So oftentimes um, I get parents, uh, some parents have not listened to what I told them and they told me that I have to teach this to their kids. And I get to a point sometimes when I say, I say what I should teach, but when they keep telling me what to teach, I start doing what they want to kind of prove a point. Um, at least I did that for, for a period of time and then they realized it was not working and then they went back to what I said in the first place. So I think it is very important that you trust uh, the co coach's process. It is also very important to make sure the kid is actually learning the right thing. Let's just say they just love playing games. Playing games is not going to help. Only playing is not going to help that kid improve very much. There might be a genius who manages to do that. Like someone like Nakamura, for example, has managed to become super strong by playing a lot of games. But it's not going to work with everyone. And we can't try to, to be someone else. We have to develop our own talent. And so I think it's very important to kind of uh, support your kids to do what they like, but in the same time, give them the follow the coaches our, like, let's just say the coach says for four hours a week, you have to work on chess, but you have to do tactics and end games and study your your openings and just make sure they actually do those things in that order um, so that they continue their progress. Something else they said earlier, so find reinforcements to, to help them. Don't put pressure on them that they have to win in a tournament X or Y. If you put pressure on the kid and they lose, they will feel like they've disappointed you and I I don't know. I, I personally, I felt as I was growing up, I grew up in a chess family and I often felt that my dad was never proud of me, no matter how many tournaments I won. Um, I, I, I haven't felt like he was, he was proud enough of what I did. And I think it's because of the pressure that I felt he was putting that I had to always be number one. And sometimes later in their lives, it, it, it can crush down whenever it, they will have a bad tournament. So it is very important to, to teach them that uh, having a bad tournament is part of the process and just don't show your, your sadness as much in front of them uh, because, because it could actually make them just keep putting too much pressure on themselves and then it might be tough. For additional tips, because we might have extra questions, I won't go even more into this, but um, I, I put in I put in the chat the website. Uh, uh, Grandmaster Elshan, our co-founder of Chess Evolve, um, he actually wrote a couple of great tips, um, and uh, and I shared the link with you so you can read more <laughs> about it. Um, and um, and I love I love how he has he has written them down. So uh, hopefully you you click on it and you read. Um, Oh, this this is a great one about sportsmanship. Make sure that your kid, after they lose, they don't start kicking around and stuff. Just try to learn to be mindful about the opponent. Shake hands. It's always nice to do, and and just uh, um, have some you know dignity. Let's say when when you lose, um, and take it as a as a learning process. Anyways. You can read more about it on website uh, on Elshon's website, which I posted in the in the chat. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you. And just one last question from me before I jump into the audience question. So I remember there's a, a lot of like uh, overwhelmed stage when parents uh, just first two years 
staying with the, their chess kids. I, I mean, as a beginner or early intermediate players. So at that time, I remember all parents have so many questions. For example, like why my kids have so many blunders, or there are some kids habit, like I mean, work in some tournament, but may not be a healthy habit. For example, like a hope chess, whatever. So about all these uh, early stage experience or uh, habits, I mean, what is a good thing to do and what is not a good thing to do? I, I mean, I assume not, not everyone is, is a beginner parents in this room. So we want to make this answer a little short, just not take too much time. So basically you, you want to know how, how to yeah. deal when like at the beginning, at the beginning of the. Yeah. Of the I mean, what kind of like a knowledge to focus on or, or what kind of, what kind of a habit to build up in order to re resist on uh, blunders and, or what kind of a, a good habit to build up to make them more compatible in the future level. Yeah, so the part of the blunders is tricky because you see, like when you start the game of chess, you have uh, so many pieces on the board, and it's kind of hard to for for the kid to visualize all the patterns. And that's why I always like to start uh, spending a lot of times from less pieces on the board to more. Although when kids see the game of chess, they just want to play really fast and just play games. I always start with end games to teach them how to mate, how to know how to win when they have an extra pawn. And, and I start adding stuff on the board um, in order to help them develop the good visualization on the, of the board. So whenever they start having all these, you know, 32 pieces on the board to kind of have a better, better view of what is happening. Now, it's not gonna happen overnight that you do that and then suddenly you see everything. But um, but it is important and uh, a great place to do it. So Lee just had this thing that I told you, just basics. And based on this, you actually help see the various cap the the various stuff. So you need to get some books that focus on various captures and various tactical themes like forks, pins, skewers, um, the various tactical ideas that could happen geometrically on the board so that the kid starts seeing that theme and uh, the more they see the the better their improvement should be with over time um and um if they have a coach the coach should be able to start acknowledging the the reason the tactical themes that the kid keeps falling for and then suggest to work on that specific theme for the week let's say um, to keep seeing various positions that would would help them improve uh, in that theme, and and with time, it's it's going to start disappearing. Okay, thank you. And sure. so now I'm going to pick up question from the audience. Good. And by the way, I, I put a coupon code right here. If anyone, I only limit to five. So whoever wants to register for the next semester, getting cheaper, they can do that. And so. The uh, there's audience says the how long can these periods last? The stagnation period. Yeah, and I think just it like depends a, on the rating. Sometimes it could last like I've seen even a year. Uh, period. Sometimes it's just you know, it depends. I think it is very important to also think about how many extracurricular activities your kid is doing. If it's just chess, then hopefully that period is not a year because then it's it's not it's it's too long. They must not do the right thing. If you gave the coach one year and the kid is still like is doing the things and is still there, they you might be a diff need of a different coach or you might need to stop it for a second and then start back. Um, I usually think it they usually last like six, seven months oftentimes. But I also had students that were stuck around, let's say 13, 1400 and weren't growing uh, for more than a year. So I think when you see stuff like that, you either have to take take the kid and ask them, 
okay, are you are you still interested in chess? Do you want to learn? Are you doing what your coach has been telling you to do? Or, you know, because usually I don't think it should be more than, you know, six, seven months of accumulation. Another thing very important is also, I don't think kids should play every weekend. Now, chess might be one of the two things that they do, and then, you know, you want them to play, but no matter how much they love playing, sometimes they can use the weekend better by actually spending time on working on improvement areas rather than playing. So I would recommend maybe um, two tournaments a month and um, the other weekends just spend on, on improving. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's helpful. And, and how to? Uh, there was another question about how to how to handle losing losing streaks. Mm -hmm. um, I think Elshon's blog is going to be really helpful with that. Um, you need to remember the learning is part of the process, and just for for uh, the purpose of kind of showing that you know they're not alone, I'm just going to search for my name here. Yeah. By the way, if other people have any questions, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. if you're too lazy to type, send them. you can also I just it. wanted to show you how many games I lost mm -hmm. myself, and I probably can show you on, on Leeches too. So everyone loses. That's why my point. Okay. Does it actually show? How oh, yeah. There it is. Look at that. Look at my, my wins and loses. This is online, right? And I stream sometimes or something happens, all right? So I have played online 4,673 games, and out of that, I lost a fourth of it. And it's kind of a lot, actually, now that I think about it. I don't have that many draws. Looks like, you know, I, I'm winning quite a bit, but, you know, this is me, right? But I've played quite a lot of games. So it is normal that you have losses. If you take the learning process from the loss, you understand where you went wrong and why you went wrong, um, then it is actually, it's, it is a win. It is a win for your future. It's kind of like in life, you know, you're not always going to get A's. Sometimes you're going to get B's or maybe you get all A's, but then you go to get a job and then you don't know to do anything in that job because you haven't developed enough skills you just focused on trying to memorize whatever the exams were a b c d right so it is very important to to take the loss and learn from it even here i think they kind of show anyways i got a lot of losses it doesn't show we can go yeah. to another question hopefully that answered it. <laughs> okay the leech has answered it yeah of course you will lose to your peers I lost a lot, a lot of games. Yeah, that makes sense. And so uh, the next question, uh, I see uh, someone says, if I want to be a, a, a attacker, what what does this word mean? I, I don't really know, actually. So they want to attack more. The, the, I don't, I, I don't, I'm not sure this is a, a particular uh, tech terms or this is some something else. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I get that question. I see it by Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, is it better to some modern attackers? Like, I believe, <laughs> I believe you should study, you should study games of Tal and Nishmedino for sure. Yeah, those good, good ones for sure. That's what you should study. Classics are very important. In order, once the kid reaches 14, 1500, it is very important for them. If, even before then, they should have seen some examples. They need to know the know the history of chess. It is very important. So have them go online, Google the world champions, learn their names, read a little bit about them, uh, look at their styles, and start looking at games. Even if the games that were played a longer time ago um, might have mistakes, that's not the point. The point is to look how to plan things. Planning is very important in chess. And when you see a lot of games, you start developing creativity and start having a, an idea of what it is that you should do once you have developed your pieces. Um, so watching games of the classics and not just world champions, but other strong players at, at those times is very important. 
Okay. Yeah. So the next question, someone asked how to help the young kids build up confidence in playing higher rated players. Well, it seems like this is a typical scenario. Some kids going to be scared yes. and their tactics change when they're facing with higher rated players. So what do you think about that? Actually, personally, I love to play higher rated players. You should yeah, tell your someone. kids, yeah, when you play higher rated players, you got nothing to lose because normally you should lose to them. So you should just play chat. The point is when you're sitting at the board, it's you and your opponent. And you have to tell yourself, what does this guy have that I don't have? Nothing. We have the chess pieces. We have 16 pieces when you start both. And it's a game. They don't get the engine to help them. They don't get the parent to help them. They have no one to help them. It's just you against them. And you're going to try to play the best chess that you can. Don't look at the rating. If you feel that your kid is struggling with the rating, uh, like they see someone stronger and they panic, then don't tell them. Just tell them play chess and try to avoid looking at that because, uh, you know, just, just nothing to lose. Now, you can ask me the same question and say, well, what about if you play a lower rated because they have to win? And what if they lose? They lose a lot of rating. You know, at the end of the day, rating is just a number that shows uh, your current strength or the level that you have at that moment, the, the shape that you are in at that particular moment. You can have a bad day and the rating is going to fluctuate. It's never going to just go up all the way or down too much. It's going to fluctuate typically, uh, should not be in my opinion, more than like 100 points. 100 points is already kind of high. But if you had a bad, really bad tournament, that probably is going to go down more. But that fluctuation is okay. Don't focus so much on the points. Focus on the learning process. And also, very important for parents, make sure you take a look at how your kid has progressed over a longer period of time. Not just like one month, he went from 1,800 to, to 1,500. What is going on? Well, maybe how did he get there to 1,800? Maybe he just really jumped a lot and he still needs to kind of accumulate some stuff. Okay, that was a very exaggerated thing. It's not going to happen. But make sure you look for six months. After six months, you kind of see where they are. What have they learned? Are they still making the same exact mistakes? Have they improved? Things like that. Take it, take it for a longer period of time. Please, don't, don't look too high. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's good. And so do we have any other questions? Yeah. Make sure they have fun uh, playing mm -hmm. chess, you know, don't, don't do it like it's something forced or, you know, you're just, just enjoy the game. Enjoy being creative. Um, listen to what the coach says or what you should do to improve. And, and I think it's going to be, it's going to be a, a good and actually, uh, when you mentioned rating things, I mean, I, I mean, from my perspective, I also curious about the same thing. I mean, when kids start to trying to learn more and trying to be more brave to try new things, which he never did before, like new openings, new middle game strategies, mm -hmm. and then they get into a new territory, not so familiar with, and mm -hmm. they start to lose more or getting declined. Uh, on rating, right? So, what what do you feel about that? I mean, should should the kids always like uh, try to learn new things? And they should always try, always try to learn new things. Regarding openings, it's a bit tricky because depending on what opening, uh, the change. So, first of all, you need to understand why the kid. If the kid themselves want to learn a new opening, you have to understand why. If they say, I don't like this, it is not acceptable to change the opening. If they have something just like that answer, it's not acceptable to change it. If the coach start noticing that they just don't get it, they, they tend to get to close positions and uh, they're doing better with open positions where more pieces get traded or then they can try to suggest different openings that would change that for them 
they don't have to change the totally the opening, but they can change specific moves to to get more of the positions that are um, more open, for example. Now, um, if the kid wants to learn new openings and then they are the ones that spend the time reviewing, you have to keep reviewing the openings, like replaying them. Chisabel has this, this opportunity that you can um, just put in your openings and then it automatically tests you on how you should play on those specific moves. Uh, you just have to keep um, keep reviewing the the moves and you have to understand why you're making them. So around 14, 1500, you start building up more on your knowledge. Until then you have built up some, but that's where you can start feeling if someone is stronger and they want to learn something new. So probably, yeah, that's something that has to be discussed and has to be uh, worked with the coach. Also remember, it's not gonna be an overnight thing. So it cannot be taught in one in one hour. You cannot teach a whole new opening, but you can start showing the ideas and then the kid can build up, like I showed you how to create a study on leeches, for example. They can build up various chapters and in each chapter they can have a different line with the opening that they want to play. So also, whenever they lose a game, they need to go back and see if it was in the opening they made a mistake, um, how they can improve that. If it's not possible to improve, then change earlier. So mm -hmm. kind of like that. Take some time to build. Um, okay. But yeah, these are things that, oh, also one more thing. Um, when you change the opening, so it takes, let's just say, a month to kind of learn something new. Don't go directly to a tournament and playing over the board. While you're learning, play some games online or play against the engine. Um, on on uh, Lee Chess, you can, when you click here, um, play, and you can click create game. So you can actually create a game, like you can actually set up As you can see here, play against the computer, or play against a friend. So if you as a parent play chess and you have a similar level to your kid, you can click here, play with a friend, select, you know, whatever kind of game you want to play, and then um, play against each other and train that in that opening. Or play against the computer and set up that specific position that you want here you can click from position so you can move you can put a, a few moves or you can put the the position that you want insert it here right and by doing so you're training it before actually playing it over the board i never recommend playing an over uh, an opening over the board for the first time if it's a serious competition it has to be trained before and uh, if they don't have a partner definitely online is the way to do it and forget about the rating online it doesn't have to be as huge what you want is to have uh, to play against people of similar levels and just test out your openings or if your your kid enters time travel a lot that can be a great tool they can play faster time controls if your kid is struggling with spending too little time then you have to to try to stay with them and remind them every move as they play to ask themselves what the opponent wants to do mm -hmm. every single move. By stopping and thinking about what the opponent wants to do, they reduce a lot of the mistakes that they would normally make. And hopefully that you trans transfer that to over the board and uh, they slow down their play. They don't play in five seconds, one move. Sure. Okay. Uh, I, I see one more question from Chris. And, and by the way, I just want to mention to everyone, Sabina's new semester class starting tomorrow. So okay. if anyone wants to join, I mean, she has class all the way from 1000 rating range into 1800 rating range. So you can find different classes. And of course we have different coaches. So you can check our website and use the coupon right here. And so if you want to see Sabina again, you can join the class tomorrow. And so, yeah. uh, there's one more question 
Yes, uh, that's the class page. So everyone can, can join that. And so the next question, Chris is asking you, the book. What book and player has the most profound influence on yes. me? So um, when I was growing up, um, I had 300 games of Alexander Alekhine. Uh, Alexander Alekhine being the fourth world chess champion, very aggressive player. And my dad, my parents gave that to me. And uh, I studied that book. Unfortunately, I did not develop into being an attacking player. Uh, I play much better positional chess. So um, although that book was something that I read, it didn't really help me as much. It helped me develop the knowledge of how an attack should be built, but it did not it did not help me develop into that kind of a player. Um, what other book? Uh, I think uh, Zurich 1959 is also a very big tournament so by Bronstein that I read and I liked very much. And uh, my favorite chess player now is Capablanca, was said all Capablanca. And Oh, as I say, 59, 53, 53. Okay, sorry. Elsha is correct to me, like usually. Yeah, my bad. Um, and um, so Capablanca is my favorite player. I also love Rubinstein very much. So two players that are very good, that we're really good at, at positional chess. Um, those are my favorites. And... Uh, yeah, I, I highly recommend for those who want to improve um, a bit. It's not the perfect kind of book to get, but for those who want to improve their um, knowledge uh, on, on the classics, learn about the world champions, learn a bit about their lives, but also see their games. This series by Gary Kasparov, is definitely a great start and everyone can read through this. Um, it has five parts for each world champion before him. Some of them have more world champions and it also has players at the time in these books. So you can see really cool games and, um, and read through the thoughts of Kasparov. If you're trying to get some books for your kids to improve and you feel that they like to read history and stuff like that or they want to improve be sure to pick up a book that has explanations a lot of explanations don't pick up a book that just has moves pick one that has explanations so that it guides them through what's happening in the position for example um pick up a, a collection of games by someone famous the best one to get is 60 memorable games by Fisher. Okay, so books like that, because it goes through the process of that actual player and you can see what they thought about in that moment uh, and, uh, and things like that. It can help with improvement almost at any level. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, maybe someone already noticed that Elshan and also Jim Elshan is so eager yeah, to support yeah. our events. So I, I would say in the new future, uh, you will see uh, Alshan going to show up in the next section, in the future section, talking about the higher rated training tips. So that'll be slightly focused on different rating groups, more higher rated, or even the title player preparations. So that's going to be our next event. And, and also uh, in the near future, we were going to have more opportunity for people to play simo against either Sabina or Alshan. And so we will keep getting more events for people just have fun. And Alshan, do you want to say hi to everyone? Well, sure. I would like to say a few words. Thanks for having me. And uh, I was enjoying and learning things. I mean, some of it I already know, of course. And uh, and uh, I'm glad for everyone who is here. I hope they managed to take a lot from this meeting and Sabina shared a lot of good points and uh, she was spot on with a lot of the uh, points she made and uh, I love them and uh, I hope that uh, parents would follow 
through with the uh, subpoena's advice. Yeah, and uh, and if you want to more tips from from for parents, Elshin has written this. I already said it three times. So <laughs> I've been popularizing your your blog, Elshin, with with the tips that you gave parents. And thank you. Yeah, I'm writing a couple more too, uh, but I I haven't finished them yet. Yeah, and we certainly hope that that you consider registering uh, for our academy, or you keep us in mind. Um, and also, if not, at least please follow our uh, Instagram and, and Facebook pages um, to get a few, you know, uh, you know, videos, explanation videos with various positions. Both Elshan and I started recording. So we're going to post the positions three, four times a week um, where we give like a brief explanation to kind of see our teaching, uh, teaching techniques teaching ways and um yeah That's yes, thank you thank you thanks everyone and thank you wrap up so we don't have any other questions okay good good to see you and see you next time thank you see you bye bye everyone hope you're gonna join